Okay, by this one, the whole data are filled. I can see the profile. And uh, now we can use it in the line type. In the line type, we go to drag and lift tab. And here in drag coefficients, you can select this generic drag. Press OK. Now our flexible riser with variable drag coefficient is ready for running. We just press on dynamic analysis button. At the same time, we can open the workspace to see the graphs. Uh, it's simulating and we will see how the progress is. Okay, the simulation completed. By this example, the variable data is concluded. Just I want to show you another example as beyond the orc of legs. Okay, this is a real situation in which I use the variable data to solve an issue. Uh, I think it was in 2012 that we had two pipelines to be installed in a project in Tanzania. And uh, one of them was 28 inch that we had some issue for installation and uh, the analysis was outsourced and they came up uh, with a solution which had buoyancy unit required for installation and uh, it has two types of arrangement one was uh, the arrangement that you see here and the other one, which is a bit strange, had a variable distribution of the buoyancy units. And uh, we couldn't accept this one. You know, these kind of solutions may look attractive and interesting from mathematical point of view, but how can you maintain this kind of buoyancy units in a real situation. So finally, they could find a better solution. It was this one. Still, we were not convinced that we use buoyancy units. We wanted to omit all these buoyancy units. And after a few meetings and many discussions, we realized that they are not going to remove the buoyancy units. So at that stage, I tried to use our capabilities to remove these buoyancy units. The main points I concentrated to try to remove the buoyancy units were these four points. Uh, the first point was to change from stress-based design to strain-based design. You know, from AST to LRFT, or we can say from DMV, 1981 to the MVOSF101. Regarding to this one we talked before. And the other thing was to change the roller settings and the stinger angle. I completely find another roller settings and stinger angle. The other point was to have a new look to the Metocean study because the operation was just a quiet short period of time and uh, the last thing that i did was using the nonlinear moment curvature relationships and this is the one that i want to explain here okay from where this one is coming let's go to the dmv os f101 Uh, 
here let's search for the simplified criteria simply right okay here in this section under the simplified laying criteria there are some points for calculation requirements here as the first point as written the analysis shall be conducted using a realistic nonlinear stress strain in the parentheses or moment curvature representation of the material in the parentheses or cross section so the dmv is recommending to use the realistic nonlinear stress strain representation of the material or moment curvature of the cross section okay the nonlinear relationship between moment curvature or stress strain reminds me to Romberg or Scoot. So let's see what is Romberg or Scoot. Okay, this is the report that uh, Romberg and Oskud in 1943 prepared after uh, a lot of examination. And uh, yeah, here is the title description of stress strain curves by three parameters. Apparently, they did so many examination with it's steel based materials and uh, aluminum based materials and they suggested an expression between stress and strain this is the expression as you see it contains three parameter which is the elastic modulus and is known and k and then are two parameters that now we know them as Romberg good parameters. If you go through the report, you will see that they have passed two straight lines from the origin with 70% and 85% of the modulus of elasticity and found their intersection with the curves that fit to the data points. And if you put the coordinates of the, those two points in the expression they have suggested, we will have two equations with two unknowns and we can solve and find the unknown, which are the romberg good parameters. But in our work, we mainly are not using this uh, approach. You can use any approach. We just need two equations to find the parameters. So here uh, we consider two another point. So the yield point is considered for a strain of 0.5 percent and another point that we have considered is for the ultimate tensile strength as you see the strain is 23 percent uh, from where we got this 23 percent uh, let's go to the api 5l okay i'll search for elongation we can find some ranges that we can select it should be something between 23 and 24% and we selected 23% which is more conservative. If we put these two points in this equation, we will find two equations that we should solve to find alpha and n which are the Romberg good parameters in this definition. Why I'm telling this definition? Because the initial expression that Romberg and Uskut suggested was a bit different with this one. After finding these parameters, we can plot the stress strain curve. And if we integrate over the cross section, we can find the moment curvature curve. According to a study, considering the Romberg-Uskut curve is a 
conservative assumption. Okay, now let's see how we do it in Oracle Flex. Like the previous example, first we go to the variable data and go to edit variable data. And here we select the bending stiffness. And there is a plasticity wizard. If we press on it here, we can select a stress instrument table or Ramberger scoot curve. And then we can put these inputs. And here we can see the profile of the stress strain. And if we press on calculate, here we see the moment curvature data and we can see the curve as well. Okay, this is our pipeline. Since we have just one line type, so this pipeline should be the same type. Just we open that form, go to a structure and in the bending stiffness section, we can select this stiffness one and press OK. And now I'm doing the static analysis. OK, it's done. The last points that I should mention, you need to be careful when using Romberg's hood curve for a few reasons. 